Lucifer was one of these angels. He was a dreamer with fantastical ideas. They felt his way of thinking was dangerous. Ultima. But it's time we lived on our own terms. This isn't your world anymore. <laughs> you cruel, manipulative. Is this all part of your plan? It's all just a game to you, isn't it? Hey? I know punishment. And he did not deserve that. He followed your stupid rules. And it still wasn't good enough. So what does it take to please you? Break your rules and you fall, follow them and you still... See, Christianity is a form of brainwashing and thought control that creates intense fear around the very act of questioning it. But when you really begin to look at it with open eyes, you'll see that God isn't the God of love we've all been conditioned to believe in. What if I told you that Lucifer isn't actually Satan? See, Satan is just a term that means adversary. That's it. So isn't it possible that this portrayal of Lucifer as Satan, the adversary, the bad guy, is nothing more than propaganda? Lucifer, the beautiful, wise, androgynous angel of light who desires for everyone to realize their own divinity, has been vilified and painted as an evil, red-horned devil obsessed with world domination. But if Lucifer isn't the evil entity he's portrayed as, what would his victory and the supposed end times really mean? If you dive into various spiritual traditions, you'll discover that there are positive interpretations of Lucifer. And in these traditions, he's viewed as a champion of enlightenment, liberation, and love. When one second you have God is all-knowing and all-loving God, and then the next second, he's a brutal murdering killer. Who's killing all the people in the Bible? It's not Satan. Who's killed millions of people? Slaughtered them brutally. Who's killed children, babies? Who's ordered the brutal murder and killing of men, women, and children? It's not Satan. Hey everyone, what's up? Uh, it's been long overdue, but we've had to get into this. Um, I just want to say, you saw one of the gentlemen there <laughs> um, explain how the Bible and Christianity is just propaganda to, I guess, mask the fact that their hero, and I don't even want to say its name, we'll just call him the enemy, is actually the good guy in this. Um, and the Lord your God is actually the narcissistic, murdering psychopath. You know, while the enemy, again, is the ultimate bleeding heart humanist that cares about everyone. But, as we always continue to say in multiple videos, there is nothing new under the sun. These people, they tend to think that they're rebels. They think they're going against the grain, even though our government's pushing the same stuff. You saw one of the guys who identifies as non-binary by the way um he has a very popular youtube channel so does billy carson billy carson has a pretty um big uh what's the word i'm not gonna say calling but um a big group of supporters um he's on television shows he's been interviewed by multiple people um he's building his platform pretty well but um The only thing that people don't understand, they say, you know, it's propaganda or whatnot, but everything that you watch on television, even what you listen to, the music industry, 
is corrupted by this. Your media entertainment is corrupted by this, even video games with some of the clips that we showed you. Um, your government's corrupted by this. You're seeing that a lot of these people that are writing legislator today, um, they're in some way, shape or form associated with these type of ideas, this new age stuff, although none of it's new. Um, this is why you're starting to see perverse become normalized. You're starting to see the inversion of everything, which is what Luciferianism is. Um, whatever label you want to give it, Gnosticism, Hermeticism, it all has the same source and it all serves the same master. Just like you have the body of Christ, you have the body of Antichrist. And you're seeing a bunch of Antichrist, just like John told us in the New Testament. Antichrist is already here and it's been here. Uh, Nimrod was a antichrist, you understand. Rebellion has always been the normal solution when it's come to the secular world. We see that in the books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, how the enemy tried to offer our Lord all the kingdoms of this world if he just bows to them. And, of course, our Lord rejected that, um, you know. The enemy does rule the secular world, and you're seeing the secular propaganda being pushed, although they're going to claim that it's Christianity's fault. And, you know, and listen, I'm not a big supporter of Christianity, the organized religion. The church is compromised. We're seeing a lot of people uh, being exposed as far as Christianity, and they're just like this Billy Carson, the other guy, you know, and I can't blame these people. I myself am a sinner. Uh, I look at some of these people who are viewed as corrupt, like a Nancy Pelosi or even our president, Joe Biden. If I were in their position, again, one of our first Christian videos we came out with was, you know, the measure of a man is what he does with power. If I'm in that position, can I sit here and say that I myself would not be corrupted if I have power, influence, money, I get to do whatever it is that I want? So I can't sit here and judge these people, you know, that's going to be up to the Lord our God to judge these people. Um, I can say what they're doing. They're definitely flat out lying to you. You saw how Billy Carson is calling our, you know, our Lord a killer, you know, like he's the murderer of innocent children and women and everything else, how he put it. And then I showed you a clip just last year alone. We're putting up World War II numbers worldwide just on abortion alone, guys. And it's been the leading cause of death in the past five years. You don't have to make this stuff up. And I don't think that's the Lord our God. The Lord our God, when you read books such as Leviticus and others, especially in the Old Testament, you see that he's against what these rebels think they're rebelling against, going against the grain. But you're actually going with the flow. You're being part of the group and you're pushing exactly uh, what our government, even places like the Vatican and other things are pushing if you watch a marvel movie you're going to see that they glorify homosexuality and all this weird stuff you understand um this stuff is nothing new but ultimately as well because the enemy he can't create nothing that's the problem and but he basically uses the same lie that he used back in the day um when he tempted eve and deceived her in the garden of eden he talked about knowledge and power and basically with the prospect that you can be your own God. And this is what these people tell you as well, like Billy Carson and the other gentlemen. We're just using a few examples that a lot of you are probably not privy to. Um, people like Billy Carson and the other gentlemen, they know that you don't read your Bible. And the enemy himself knows that you don't read your Bible. The enemy knows more about the Bible than a lot of us. Uh, Judas Iscariot, you can say what you want about him, but he was a disciple. And you got to understand, probably no one on this earth had the understanding of the Bible that Judas had. And that's the sad part about this. When you get to books like James, he says you would do well to know that God is one. Even the devils believe and tremble. And that's what I'm saying. You see, when our Lord confronts demons, even the respect <laughs> that they give him, because they know that he is the one true God. And a lot of us, we want to sit here and play holier than thou, but we don't even garner the respect and reverence of the enemy has towards the Lord our God. Our Lord is sovereign, and this is all part of his plan. He is still in control, guys. 
And you read books such as Hosea, for my people perish due to lack of knowledge or lack of understanding. Um, it's the same thing. People are just not reading the Bible and they throw this stuff right here in front of your face. We use some subtle ways on how they use their propaganda, their Gnosticism and whatever else that they're blatantly putting on your television shows for your children to watch today. One example was the Final Fantasy 16 game. It was a, I think it was uh, nominated for game of the year. So it was one of those type of games, but basically the protagonist is a guy who turns into a fiery dragon demon like thing. And at the end of the game, you actually kill God or the creator and you take over as God. You understand? Uh, again, the enemy is portrayed with a bleeding heart and actually being a humanist that cares for humanity. You know, um, the other clip that we showed you again, which is, you know, the thing that they worship believes in being androgynous and whatever else. Um, but that was the latest Assassin's Creed game, uh, the ending. This guy, you know, he merges the masculine, becomes one with the feminine, and then they, they become this new being. Again, that's all hermeticism. It's all Gnosticism. But it all goes back to the doctrine of devils, pretty much, guys. Um, every show that you watch, I promise you guys... Um, I, too, did not believe in this stuff, guys. I, too, I had friends that believed in the Illuminati and all this nonsense, you know. And I used to tell them straight out, like, you guys are crazy. You're getting too deep into this stuff. <laughs> you know, the world is not what you think it is. You know, um, I've mentioned my story a few times. I'm sure a lot of you already know what's going on with me. But once I finally went through this stuff myself, and once my eyes were finally open to what they're, what, what's right there in front of my face, I just can't unsee it anymore, guys. And I'm at the point where I can't even really watch TV anymore. <coughs> I can't watch games, you know, or play games. I got rid of my PlayStation 5 and other things. But I know it's just junk for the most part. Uh, maybe if these people actually were good writers and everything else, maybe I would watch more, but... I mean, the stuff that they're pushing out today, it's bombing at the box office. You know what I'm saying? It's not even good. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, I'm at the point now, just like my conspiracy theorist fan, uh, friends that I used to, you know, kind of make fun of back in the day. <laughs> I'm kind of on the level of them as well. Like, I don't even celebrate these holidays. I don't celebrate Christmas. I don't celebrate Halloween because I know what they're honoring. Even Valentine's Day here that's coming up. But this stuff is literally right here in your face. It's on every platform. The whole music industry is compromised uh, by these occultists, whatever you want to call them, Satanists. You know, they'll tell you that they're not Satanists. You understand, of course, you're going to deny it, um, you know, but they are. And they don't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They serve the enemy. Um Music industry, entertainment, even the news guys, they have a type of code wording that they use. Um, we'll probably get deeper into this stuff in the future. This is just kind of an introductory video into stuff that we're going to get into here pretty shortly. Uh, they tell you this stuff, though, blatantly on the news, everything else. They're telling you that there's aliens now. There's a reason behind that as well. Um you know, guys, but your television show, your probably your favorite television show, your favorite movies, your Marvel DC, we didn't even get into all that. It's all propaganda for the enemy. And we kind of want to just give a video that calls this stuff out. Um, no matter what the enemy does, and if you truly have faith in the Lord, I truly believe that this evil cannot touch you nor affect you. I really do. Um, perhaps I can get into some more meat. Uh, but first, we're kind of handing out milk right now. The enemy's not smart again. He did not create the soul. There's only one who can do that. That is the Lord your God. Um, he cannot really create anything, to be honest with you. He's just a copier and a mimicker. Um, I've been doing a lot of extensive research on the occult and things like that. Um, and what these people plan on doing, guys, it's pretty, to me, idiotic, you know, but they really believe that they can defeat the Lord our God, guys. And I'm going to be the one that's going to be called crazy and a conspiracy theorist. And they put this stuff out there for you to see it. 
you know, um, again, I was not a believer in this stuff. So I really get it when guys are very, off, you know, when people are off put by this type of message that we're trying to send you. But, um, you know, um, again, once my eyes were open and I can finally see what's going on, I, it's kind of hard to unsee at this point. Um, even when I see, you know, even previews for movies like Barbie and everything else, I, it's kind of right there in the open. Um, I do want to end it here with Deuteronomy 32, which is the song of Moses. The enemy does not win, guys. And I'm trying to tell you, if you start building that faith in your Lord, um, you'll just see how pathetic these people are. Um, these people are definitely in contact with malevolent beings, whether they want to call them aliens or not. We will get into that as well. You know, I was a very secular person, uh, was in the science. I was in AP classes, junior high. I was in uh, college courses in high school for science and history was my other favorite subject as well. But uh, what you need to understand about these occultists, when you read the Bible, it mostly centers on the seed that led to our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, the occultists, they have a different view. Uh, David's held in very high esteem, again, to Christians as well, and as in the Bible. Um, this is one thing I don't like about the church. Um, I think if the church kind of exposed the enemy more, they would not have to turn to secular <laughs> means to try to get people to go. Cause I know it's just a money thing and, and it's sad. And this is going to continue to happen as time goes on. You'll see in our, in our next video, when we talk about the WEF, they actually released a lot of pretty crazy inf information that people are just not even talking about. Uh, we're going to have to call that one out as well. But um, they really hold Solomon to high esteem. And we know that Solomon, because he had 700 wives, 300 concubines, and he was the first to start setting up these um, temples and things to other gods in Israel and even practices uh, to Baal and, you know, passing children through the fire of Moloch. It really started with Solomon. And when you read it from the occultist point of view, they really hold Solomon in high esteem because he participated in a lot of this stuff that they are trying to participate and reenact today. Um, what you need to understand, our, the Lord our God told us to be fruitful and multiply, but it was the enemy that supplied us information and things um, about building cities, even organized religion. Again, a lot of people, that they attack Christianity, and there is a reason for that, but... Um, the truth of the matter is that the, four, the first institutionalized religion was had nothing to do with the Lord your God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And again, we're going to come out with videos to kind of shed this light as well. The occultists, they really hold Solomon in high esteem. Um, we all know that Solomon fell, and you read books such as Ecclesiastics and things, you see how his mind is, and he knows that he's screwed up, and he's basically a warning for people to do not follow this part, this path, you know, uh, David was after our Lord's heart. And you see, even David had struggles too. David was also murdering things like that. We all fall short people. Um, I think when people's eyes really start truly being opened and they're finally starting to see that they made wrong decisions. Um, when that time does come, I don't think we, it, Billy Carson or that, that weirdo guy uh, in one of the clips I showed you, uh, people like him, People like those, they're going to need help and they're going to need support. Unfortunately, the Lord our God told us to love your enemies. Um, they can be useful um, when the time is needed, okay? So we shouldn't judge these people. And we've all done evil. We all have done sin, guys. Uh, I can tell you that right now firsthand. I'm no better than these people. Um, but the occultists, they also are big on the line of Cain because they were builders. This is why the Masons are and the architecture and things like that. When you start looking at the New World Trade Center and some other things in Washington, you'll see some very distinctive calling cards that link to those types of people. Um, but these practices, they're Canaanite, you understand? I'm not saying to go beat up a Canaanite or go blame them. That's not the case. Even one of the apostles uh, was a Canaanite, guys. Um, but their practices, uh, the ordinances and things that they follow, you know, it's just like the body of Christ. If you follow the ways, commandments, the creeds, the statutes of our Lord, you're going to be a child of the Lord. There's only, you know, I understand in this world today, people, they're all 
you know, fixated on race and everything else. And we're all just basically bickering and ready to fight each other. That's what the enemy wants. It's just divide and conquer. But you're either of the body of Christ or you're the body of the enemy. It's that simple. And when it gets to the point where they're going to have you or force you to do body augmentation and continue to take certain, uh, let's say, uh, pharmacia, <laughs> you know, to function in society and to be able to buy and sell things. And we're really going to open your eyes on this in our next video when we cover what the WF has just stated. Um, you know, that's when you're really going to be... Uh, in big trouble, you understand. They do have to tell you, and you know they do allow you to make a choice. It's your free will. Um, the enemy hates the free will more than the Lord our God. You see, the Lord our God has no problem with free will. <laughs> he doesn't. But they want you to believe that he's the one who's going to enslave you and that you need to be freed from and everything else. This is just the inversion of evil, guys. That is all Luciferian. Occultism and religion summed up, you understand. Uh, their beliefs are definitely backwards. They believe that Satan in the garden was actually a benefactor to man. He was trying to show people their own divinity and things like that. And again, giving them the same lie that he believed in, that basically he could be God, uh, therefore you can be God. But the true guy who's going to enslave you, and I say guy, I don't even know what to call these things, what pronouns to give him, you know, um, they... It's just like what the Lord your God told you. He's only here to still kill and destroy. Um, you do have something that he does not. You bear the image of the Lord your God. It was your, it was the human race that built the pyramids. We were given the information by these things. But for the most part, they've taught us basically just how to kill <laughs> ourselves better and things like that. They've never been a benefactor to the, to the human race at all. All they've been is just like how Balaam told ba uh, Balak, how to be a stumbling block into the p children of Israel. You know, what God has blessed, the enemy cannot curse, guys. Um, but if you sin and if you give certain things those type of rights, they can definitely be a stumbling block to you. But again, the enemy did not create the soul. You got something that the enemy craves. He wants you. you see, a lot of people don't understand that our bodies are the temple of the Lord um, and he can dwell there. But the enemy as well wants your temple, you understand, so that he can dwell there. And again, we're going to kind of try to get into it in more detail um, instead of just such a broad little video that we're doing right now. But I'm just telling you guys, um, don't get caught up in the world. Bible tells us this as well. Those who are in love with the world are in enmity with God. And you just got to be mindful of what you are listening to what you're being influenced, what you're even watching. You may think that your video games are harmless and your television shows and your music is harmless, guys. It's there for a reason and it does have an effect, guys. It really does. Um, you know, this is a battle for your mind and your hearts and even your souls. And again, we have free will to, ch to choose either way. We do. Um, but we should strive to be with the Lord our God, um, and that is Jesus Christ. We should not be striving to be with the enemy. And it's time for a lot of us to finally start awakening and not be a part of this nonsense. You understand? Um, no one. I don't wish hell on any of my worst enemies, guys. I really don't. Um, it was not even designed for humans. It wasn't. It was designed for the fallen angels and the enemy himself. Um, you're totally cut off from the Lord your God there. And that in itself is something that you know, if it happens to you while you're living, even in this world, it's pointless to be alive. Let's just say that. But we are going to end this in Deuteronomy 32. People love to hate on the Bible, everything else. And I did too. I was part of that group, guys. Um, can't sit here and play holier than thou. But the Lord our God saw this even right after he made a, you know, a covenant with Moses and the children of Israel, you know, um, he knew what was going to happen even back then. So I want to end this video with Deuteronomy 31. And I'm just trying to tell you guys, make the right choice. The enemy loses. Don't go with the losers. Even if the world is trying to make it look like it's cool and it's the end thing to do. Um, guys, this stuff is not cool. You understand? Even if you think it's cool, like killing babies, you understand? 
it's only a problem, I guess, when the Lord our God orders it or does it, you know. Um, there is going to be a slaughter in the end, though. And those that are his enemies, those are the ones that are going to be slaughtered. This is when it's game time and it's game over. Just like in the days of Noah, it was the Lord our God who shut the, <clears throat> the door of the ark. You understand? And it's going to be the same way when he comes back again. And it's going to be no games. He already came as a suffering servant. The next time he is going to come as a king, you understand? He's going to definitely take over and stop playing these games. But um, I just want to read the Song of Moses, which is one of my beautiful or favorite chapters. And it just displays the spirit of prophecy, which again is Jesus Christ. And uh, the Bible is just, it's dead accurate, guys. It's just that simple. Even people who don't believe in the stuff, the secular scientists and stuff that look into this, they're amazed at just how accurate the Bible is. And that's because the true God, <laughs> the true I am, uh, he knows the creator, you know, none of this fake stuff, none of these fake gods or whatever else. He knows what's going to happen. So here we are, Deuteronomy 32. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as a rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as a small rain upon a tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Thine elders and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, which he had separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil, out of the flinty rock. Butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked, thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that beget thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see that their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger and shall burn into the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with their increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap the mischiefs upon them. I will spend my arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon him with the poisonous serpents of the dust. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young men and the virgin, the suckling also with the men of gray hairs. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say our hand is high and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there in any understanding in them. All that they were wise, that they were understood this, and they would consider their latter end. 
How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For the vine is the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter, their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belong vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself of his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up the hand to heaven and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will re render vengeance to my enemies and reward them that hate me. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenge upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with this people, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people. He and Hosea, the son of Nun, and Moses made an end of speaking all these words to all of Israel. And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whether ye go over Jordan to possess it. The Lord our God already knew the end. He is Alpha and the Omega. He is the spirit of prophecy. And he's not a liar. I'm sorry. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The enemy is a liar. He is a killer. He's the murderer. He's the accuser. He's the one through legalism tries to get you guys condemned. Um, he is powerful. He's more powerful than us, but his power is of God and his authority. He has to seek acknowledgement from God to do so. It's just that simple. He's a pruning tool. Now, that's not to say, of course, that he can't just outright do us up, you understand. Um, he's being used as a tool of God for a reason. And uh, again, it's just to test us, guys. It's just to test us. Um, I know that the Bible can be confusing, especially for beginners. Again, the enemy knows that the majority of us don't read our Bible, but it does have all the answers. And scripture will always answer scripture. Oftentimes, and I used to do this myself, uh, a lot of people just parrot what they hear, other talking points of people saying, this is just human nature and we all know this, guys. Uh, I am gonna end this video. Again, we're gonna get into a little bit, bit more meat in the future. Um, <laughs> but uh, this year has already gone crazy. People are getting attacked at malls by 12 foot aliens and whatever else nonsense they're releasing, the Epstein files and everything else. I'm trying to tell you a lot of people in power, they're associated with these people who have these pretty perverted, um, depraved uh, things that they are into. Um, there's a reason why Epstein had a, a painting of Bill Clinton hung up in one of his houses, you understand, wearing a dress. Um, that tells you a lot what's going on there. Um, but Epstein, he was a middleman in the scheme of things. There are people above Epstein. Um, but the thing is this, the Lord our God is going to win, guys. Make sure you choose the right side, and we are going to come out with more videos, all right? God bless you all. We'll talk to you later. Bye.